Okay, so welcome to the new episode. This is episode 11. And when I started doing this about uh, seven, eight months ago, I never would have thought that I'd continue, but it's really been a hoot and I enjoy doing it and I don't want to stop. So I'm hoping that you'll continue to watch the videos and I look forward to it. Uh, today's uh, episode is about uh, the the day in the life. So a question I get from some of my friends on other media is, uh, well, what's it like when you live on a boat in a marina? You know, is it, you know, I don't have a house, I don't have a car, there's no yard work, there's nothing like that, and I don't go to a job every day. So what exactly is a typical day like? And so today, you know, we're, we're going to explore that for a bit. All right, so a, a typical day like most people on the planet, it begins with your normal routines. You know, you brush your teeth, you get some food. I don't think you really want to see all that. I mean, I um, I wake up every day around 6, 6.30, and I have um, exercise phase. Before I eat, before I have any uh, tea or anything like that, I do exercise. I do lots of yoga and other stretching to try to keep myself fit because I don't run as much as I used to. And even if I did, it's just so damn cold. I don't go outside in shorts here, okay? Um, so my, my normal day starts with my exercise routine, you know, and I'll, I'll show you some of that. Then I take a walk down all four of the main pontoons here at the Inverness Marina. And I don't typically encounter anybody during my morning walk because that's typically around 6.45 to 7.15. And it's dark and it's cold usually. And it's usually raining at that time of day. Then I begin work for the day. So I'll typically do work on my boat, you know, light duty work. I'm not working frenetically like I did before. And, you know, I might be working on the sails like you'll see in this episode. Uh, it might be working on the engine, maybe fixing a fuel leak, maybe some carpentry work. You know, it's just light duty jobs, <clears throat> trying to get knock out a couple every day. And I do a couple of walks down there through the marina. I'll walk the pontoons late in the day, and I'll go visit with my friends as I see them, you know, on different boats in, in the marina. I have friends up in dry storage, and I'll pop in and see them. And I'll go check out and see what else is happening in the marina. You'll typically see, you know, a boat being launched, and you'll see, you know, maybe the, the pilot boat or the, you know, the harbor patrol boat heading out or coming back from a trip. So that's what we're going to do. So in this episode... A day in the life. So enjoy. Thanks. No, this is potentially too much information. I acknowledge that. You know, it's a, just a bathroom. You know, a normal public-ish bathroom. Not everybody can come in here. Three stalls. But what makes it different is that we have a shower. All right. No, I'm not showing any more details. I mean, there'll be no naked shower scenes on this video's channel. Um, if you want that, you should go watch Starship Troopers. Yeah, so what most people do is get, a, get themselves a shopping bag like this. It's just a hard plastic kind. In mine, I fill my flip-flops and some kind of camping sort of pack that, you know, everything you need for whatever you need to do. A lot of us call this derelict row because you got some boats that are clearly just friggin' abandoned, you know. It's a shame in a way because someone could live on that, make a good little boat for someone who had no place to live. But those are and this is what it looks like at 8 a.m. And thus concludes the morning walk. Time to get to work. Yeah, so this has been on the list for a long time. We need to unfurl, clean, inspect the foresail. It hasn't been unfurled for uh, the better part of two years. And when we raised the mass, um, a bunch of green goo came out. We weren't sure if frogs and snakes were in there too. Okay, so I've never owned a roller furler before, believe it or not. 
and it's hoisted simply by this line which is called a halyard a line that raises and lowers sails is called a halyard so what i need to do then I'm gonna, my plan is to take the sail and fold it up and stuff it into my dinghy and fill it full of bleachy water and then pressure wash it because that is just nasty. I'm not a sailing purist. That is disgusting. And then we take a mid-morning walk. Good morning, Fee. Good morning, Russ. Here's your morning. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> there, my darling. <laughs> thank you. The hot rope cutter is about as cool a tool as you could ask for. It's like a soldering iron, which can burn things. But better than a soldering iron, this one can get glowing red hot and it has a knife blade. All in one tool, so you can burn things and cut them at the same time. So you pull the trigger and you just slice through plastic nylon polypropylene line and if that's not cool enough we offer beer on board during the job yeah so people who know me know that i'm way too cheap to buy my own hot rope cutter so i borrowed it from the tool room up here and uh it's up near the dry storage yard and i have to go give it back yeah the old boat yard is filling up whiteness there. That's the spot I used to be in. Seems like a long time ago now. So this is a pretty cool feature of the marina. <clears throat> First, there's a workbench, and then there's power, and there's light. There's no heat in here, but getting out of the wind sometimes is half the battle. Lots of sailors, when they're done working on their boats for the season or before they shove off and go someplace far away, leave cans of paint. <clears throat> and the big blue jug here, that's got uh, hydraulic oil. And it's available for anybody to use. If you need to dip into some yellow paint, there you go, baby. You don't have to buy your own. Because a lot of times the jobs only require like a spoonful of a supply. So it's really a um, big benefit. This is where the hot rope cutter is. And this is where the pressure washers are, which I use to clean my sails. Pressure washers here. Really, it's a great feature. Most marinas don't have this. Because most, one of the hidden jewels of this marina. Shut up. These are mass that come off some of the other boats. And the huge mass is off the school boat. This is an oddity. oddity. Normally, all we get is uh, logging uh, ships, but those are those are blades for wind turbines that are going to be installed somewhere up in the highlands. And on the way back to the boat, I thought, well, take another walk in the pontoons and uh, see if maybe I can't score a cup of tea. Permission to come aboard, sir. Hi, Ross. Yes, come. Just hop over. It's so fucking cold. 
if it's not raining, it's fucking cold as hell. before they did this. Yeah. Yeah, too. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's what I would do it. <laughs> and you wet in that water intentionally, right? Yeah. Very good. Okay. <laughs> That's not a keeper. <laughs> <laughs> okay. well, it's, it's, like it's not gonna smell bad, is it? It's like a... No, no, not until I take the whole lot off. <laughs> okay. But yeah, <laughs> That's pretty cool. But they're the most fragile bit. They're the bits that are likely to tear and catch at times. And then that's... Okay. You, if you get those two and it starts to get a bit... Seeps up. In a couple of weeks after my boat was launched, uh, Mad Mike and Fee launched their westerly ocean boat. That's a good looking ship. For those of you who are wondering if my boat can actually move, the answer is yes. A couple times a week I go off for driving practice and I'll uh, cover more of that in a future video once I get my drone going. That'll probably get us both. That's nice, gonna get us both. Okay, so... Hello Skipjank YouTubers, this is Graham here. <laughs> Have a nice day. Just, just heat up the tea. Just heat that up, keep going, oh, keep enough. going, keep going. That's fine, thank you. Well, certainly yeah, the best part of living here in the marina is the great people who are here. Who's that chap? Yeah. And I, I always that enjoy was, my morning or afternoon ago, teas with Graham. Three homes, and I had like four cars, and the members of this and that, and you can't you can't move. You're going to be right. Hey there, so uh, thank you for watching this episode. Um, just finishing my anchor beer, except I didn't anchor. It's the end of day beer. Normally beer is for hot summer days and it's cold and it's nasty here. It's about four degrees, maybe three degrees C, and it's wet, it just finished raining, and I'm cold down to the bones, man. My, my fingers are just freezing, my toes are cold. <clears throat> but I'm not gonna complain. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a lucky guy. I'm happy for my freedom, I'm happy for good health, and I'm happy for you know, the ability to live on a boat, you know. And even though I don't like the weather, this is a, a, a damn beautiful place to be. <sighs> Maybe just not now. Um, I'm looking at birds flying overhead. Mm. Alright, so uh, the situation here is that um, um, the boat is about... 99% ready to go. You know, we need to install lifelines. I need to put on the mainsail and hoist it. I need a little more driving practice. I need to hook up the electronics. And that's it, you know. I mean, well, we could shove off theoretically anytime and head south and head for someplace warm. The, one of the limitations we have is the COVID, like a lot of folks are experiencing out there. And uh, that means uh, a, a one person who's going to join me as crew is not able to get here because of the COVID and that person's visa is only to the UK. So if I leave and I go to another country like Germany or France or Spain, that person doesn't have a visa to, to those countries. So I kind of have to stay until I assemble my crew. So that's not a unique problem. Lots of people in the world are struggling with the COVID and their travel restrictions and all that sort of stuff. And we'll muddle through that somehow. But for now, I just thank you for watching the episode. I hope you tune in for the next one. We've got some other ideas on what future episodes ought to include. Um, one of them will be lessons learned. So, and it won't include haircut. Don't worry about that. <clears throat> but for now, let's all keep charging. I know the holidays are coming. So to all my friends out there in any country in the world that I have friends, 
Enjoy the holidays. Enjoy your families. And uh, take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Hey there, Yanni. Yeah. I'm filming for YouTube, man. Oh. <laughs> cut, cut. <laughs> Reshoot the scene. Oh, well, that was great. I'll, I'll not sort of disturb you. No, no, you're okay. I'll, I'll interview you before long, man. Yeah. Well, I'll be waiting for the new video to come out. <laughs> All right, man. All right, take care.